Welcome. Just give me a minute while I think about this problem. Okay, the torque required to keep the pulley from rotating is about 0 0.16 newton meters. Are we good to go? Well, of course not. Without an explanation, just giving you the answer doesn't make much sense. Your instructor can't read your mind either. So taking a deliberate problem-solving approach will allow your instructor to give you the maximum credit for your efforts. It'll keep you from making some mistakes, and it will help you identify those mistakes you may make. Now, the ability to communicate clearly can take some thought and some self-discipline, especially at first. But it can help you more easily solve new and harder problems later on. Beyond the classroom, the ability to communicate clearly is an important part of leadership in many occupations. Whether you're an engineer leading a project group, a politician trying to build consensus, or a military commander leading troops on a mission, the ability to communicate clearly will contribute to your success. I'm Dr. Courtney. To keep the pulley from rotating, we need to figure out what the net torque is that is exerted by the two masses hanging on the strings. So the main idea here is to compute the net torque, which we designate by the capital Greek letter tau, and I'll put a subscript net, caused by the masses, we'll label them M1 and M2. And we are told that the string to which the ma these masses are attached is massless. So we do not have to take its mass into account, and that the string is not slipping, which would make the problem much more complicated. As we develop this problem, we'll start with a figure. So we have our pulley. That pulley has a radius r, and then the masses are hung on either end of a string that is over the pulley. It doesn't tell us uh, more about the arrangement of the masses, so we can designate them as mass 1 and mass 2 on either side. What forces will be exerted by these masses? Well, force 1 is going to be equal to mass 1 times gravitational acceleration, since that mass, the uh, effect of the mass is all downward. And the force exerted by mass 2 similarly will be mass 2 times gravitational acceleration. Now there's going to be a net torque that causes the pulley to rotate, and we need to choose a positive direction of rotation, so we will choose the clockwise direction to be positive, and we will be consistent with that as we assign signs to the various terms. We are told that mass 1 is equal to 270 grams, which is 0 0.270 kilograms, that mass 2 is equal to 510 grams, which is 0 0.510 kilograms. We're told that the diameter of the pulley is 14 centimeters, or 0 0.14 meters. That makes the radius equal to 0 0.07 meters, or half the diameter. So what is our plan? First of all, we need to express the net torque, which is what we're after, in terms of the torques exerted by masses 1 and 2. So we'll call that tau 1 and tau 2. Now we're not explicitly given those torques either, so we need to find a way to express them in terms of things that we do have. So we express tau 1 and tau 2 in terms of mass 1 and mass 2 uh, and their respective moment arms, R1 and R2, and gravitational acceleration. Then we can substitute values. We might simplify somewhere in between there. Let's just say simplify, if we can. Then we'll substitute values and compute the net torque which we will then report to the correct number of significant figures. 
So let's follow this plan and evaluate the problem. Recall that the definition of torque, torque is a vector, and it is equal to the moment arm vector crossed with the force vector. That is a cross product. Now we're interested in the magnitude in this particular problem, and the magnitude of the torque is equal to the magnitude of the moment arm, or the length of the moment arm, the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between them. So only the perpendicular part of the force acting on the moment arm contributes to the torque. That's what this is saying mathematically. So in this case, we have two masses, two moment arms, and two angles to consider. And we'll work that out as we go. So now we want to express that net torque in terms of the two torques caused by the two masses. Now let's take a look at that. Mass 1 is going to cause the pulley to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, which is in a negative direction. So its magnitude will be negative. So we have minus tau 1. The torque exerted by the second mass will cause the pulley to rotate in a clockwise direction, which we have designated as the positive direction. So we have minus tau 1 plus tau 2. So now we need to express tau 1 and tau 2 in terms of quantities that we have. Tau 1 is going to be equal to the moment arm 1, the force exerted by mass 1, and the sine of the angle between them, which we'll designate as theta 1. Similarly, the torque exerted by mass 2 will be the moment arm times the force exerted by mass 2 times the sine of the angle between them. So let's consider what these mean. What is force 1 and force 2? Well, we computed that here as we were uh, diagramming the situation. What about theta 1 and theta 2? The moment arm in this case is equal to the radius of the pulley. That's not always true, but in this case it is. And that is going to be the same for both masses. So R1 and R2 are the same and equal to the radius of the pulley. Now, the angle between the radius of the pulley and, which is our moment arm, and the force exerted is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. That is also the case for mass 1 here. So in both cases, R1 equals R2, and theta 1 is equal to theta 2, which is pi over 2. And that's the moment arm is 0 0.07 meters. I belabored this point a bit just because I want to simplify the mathematics later on. You would not get the wrong answer just by substituting each term, each value for each term individually and not consolidating. So we have tau net is equal to minus r, because r1 and r2 are the same. We have mass 1 times gravitational acceleration times the sine of theta, which is equal for both terms, plus r times mass 2 times gravitational acceleration times sine theta. So now we have some common terms, right? r is common to both, g is common to both, and the sine of theta is common to both. So I'm going to symbolically simplify this a little bit further and get r times g times the sine of theta, and then inside I'm left with minus mass 1 plus mass 2. So that's going to simplify my calculation a little bit as we move on to step 3 where we can substitute values. So now the net torque is equal to the radius, 0 0.07 meters, times gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the sine of pi over 2, times minus mass 1, 0 0.270 kilograms, plus mass 2, 0 0.510 kilograms. And with careful, careful computation, recall that the sine of pi over 2, or the sine of 90 degrees, is 1. And so the net torque is equal to 0 
four, nine, eight. And let's look at our units. We have meters times meters, so meters squared over seconds squared times kilograms. So kilograms times meters squared over seconds squared. But recall that the definition of a newton is a kilogram times meters over seconds squared. So this is equivalent to saying, um, and we'll express it when we express our answer to two significant figures. So the torque required to keep the pulley from rotating is about 0 0.16, and now we can say newtons times meters because we'll have a single term of meters left over there. Before we leave the problem, let's assess our answer to see whether it makes sense. First of all, let's check our units, which we sort of already did as we took uh, this expression into newton meters, but let's double check. We substituted for the radius in meters, acceleration in meters per second squared, the angle is unitless in radians, and the masses are in kilograms, so I don't think we forgot anything there. So the units check out. What about the magnitude? Well, the torque is a force applied at a distance. So if we take this torque and divide it by the moment arm, which is the same because we have a, a pulley here, and we want to compare it with the net force exerted by the masses. So that would be minus m1 plus m2 times gravitational acceleration. And in this case, they both come out, I'm still working in English units in my mind, my intuition is more English units. And so we get um, about a half a pound once you convert newtons to pounds in both cases. And so by checking our units carefully and doing a, a quick back calculation and comparing a couple of simpler calculations, we have confidence that we've achieved the right answer.